should you be mixing your songs into a limiter or a compressor that's on like the master bus, for example? Why would anybody want to do that? I've personally spent hours chasing a sound that I heard in my head only to realize that that was the finished, mastered version of the song and not something that was really achievable in the mixing state. Or on the other hand, you could spend all this time getting a perfect mix when you go to master it or you send out for mastering, it just comes back sounding different. That cycle of going back and forth between mixing and mastering is a nightmare. And so that's why people, including myself, suggest that you should be mixing into some sort of compressor, like a bus compressor or a limiter, to give you some sort of an idea of what the finished product probably is going to sound like. So this sounds like a really good thing, right? And I would say it is, but there's certain things you have to be so careful about, otherwise it's going to make your song sound way worse. And it's going to fool you into making bad mixing choices. So in this video today, I'm going to go over what those things are that you need to avoid if you mix into a compressor or a limiter. Now before I do that, I want to let you know that I have a special gift for you. In the description is a link to download my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins guide. It's got a ton of really cool free plugins that you can use on your songs. So if you need something to inspire some creativity or you're just looking for some new tools, definitely go and grab your free copy. Again, there's a link in the description. So in order for you to get the most out of mixing into a limiter or a mastering chain, you have to make absolutely sure that you're being responsible about your gain staging. Now, anytime we talk about gain staging, people think it's some magical, mysterious thing. It's not. It's very simple. All you want to make sure is that the individual tracks that you're working on, as you apply processing like compression and all these things, you're making sure that the input and output levels are about the same. Obviously, you're gonna have to balance the level to the other elements. What I'm talking about is making sure that you don't go and put a compressor on, and now the track itself is 20 dB louder than before it had a compressor. Ideally, you're gonna want your input and output levels to be somewhere between like minus 24 and maybe minus 16 dB full scale. Now, that is something that I'm just making up and something I tend to follow. You don't have to do that. But what that does is if you are mixing with a hybrid setup where you have analog gear, your levels are going to be compatible with the input level of that gear. Also, having those levels that low will help prevent your audio from doing strange things if your plugin has a fixed threshold setting. You might not notice you're at plus 20 or 30 dB above digital zero on your multi-track here, let's say on the snare top, and then when you send it to your snare bus, maybe you have a limiter or clipper or something on it that has a fixed threshold at zero dB full scale, that's gonna lead to an unexpected result. And by following some sort of gain structured approach through all the different levels in your session, when you mix different songs, you're gonna end up with about the same level going to your master bus every single time. So then having plugins sitting on the master bus that you're mixing into makes more sense because they're going to react in a similar way every time that you're mixing a song. Okay, this is so important if you want to mix into some plugins on your master bus. Now, something else that we need to be aware of is that in order for our plugin chain on the master bus to work well with all the different types of songs that we're mixing, we need to make absolutely sure that we're controlling our dynamics at multiple levels throughout our session. So let me show you what I mean by that. So for example, let's take a look at this song. This is one that I mix for a band called Deer Spring here in DC. It sounds like this. Now you didn't hear any clipping, you didn't hear any crazy movement, right? And I mix the song into a mastering chain and it worked almost perfectly. But the only reason it worked so well was because I make sure that my dynamics on all the different tracks are very well controlled. I'm not talking about smashing it to oblivion so it has no life, right? The song has life. Talking about controlling it so that there's no unexpected transients that jump through that cause the master bus plugins and the processing to overreact to that signal. So for example, I have a snare track. I have the top and bottom snare. I did some processing. Let's take a look. 
So I'm rolling off some low frequencies, getting rid of some nasty resonances I don't like. Okay, so we're sculpting the tone at the multi-track level. Then all of these tracks are going to feed a snare group bus. Okay, so it's going to combine all of these different tracks into a single track. And now if you look, you'll see I have some compression happening. Okay, I actually have multiple stages of compression. I have some SSL compression. I have this FabFilter Pro C2 compressor and what this is doing is this is kind of gluing all those tracks together so that they're all living in the same space okay let me show you without it so we're controlling our dynamics we're not making anything jump out and then following that i'm applying some tape saturation tape saturation or saturation in general kind of acts as a compressor to some degree Okay. We're filling out the sonic spectrum with new frequencies, and what that does is that's limiting the dynamic range. Okay, This is the same concept as a compressor. This maybe just is a little bit more musical. Okay, without it. So you can hear it's kind of grabbing the transient and, and pulling it down a little bit, and it's adding a little bit of the sizzle on top end energy. So I actually would probably reduce this a little bit because I want a little more punch. Perfect. And then I'm using a clipper here. And what this is gonna do is limit the dynamic range again. I'm gonna make sure that that transient, that peak of that snare drum, that initial punch is chopped off and stopped before it can get too loud. Reason again for that is I just want to squeeze that dynamic range into a more dense little sausage thing to the point where we still have the punch and the power, but it's confined to a very set area. Okay, so that is going to ensure that no plugins have to work too hard in certain spots. Okay, so let's just dig in. Now, this clipper actually sounds pretty good, and I'm doing like nine decibels of gain reduction. I don't want it that much but it's remarkable how good clipping sounds on drums yeah like right here feels pretty good and if you notice the clipper's almost engaging now even on these small drum hits right then this snare drum goes to a shell bus what do i do on the shell bus i'm doing more compression so i'm basically obsessed over controlling the dynamic range of my tracks okay and it's at multiple stages from the multi-track stage to the group bus stage to the stem stage, like the drum stem, the guitar stem, and then finally it goes to the master bus stage. Okay, and only when you control it on all these different levels are you going to reproducibly send the same level to your mastering chain almost every single time, regardless of how the song is. Now, just for fun, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of like the clippers and compressors on my snare, at least some of them. And let me just show you what ends up happening at the end. It's not pretty. Okay, we'll do it for like the kick drum too. We'll get rid of the clipper. All right. So what do we have? Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just adjusting the levels now that I've taken all those that processing out uh, just to get it to the same level it was before when I had all that compression. Uh, and you'll notice it's going to be hard to get it to that level and we're going to start distorting the kick and the snare and all sorts of stuff like the kick is quiet right if we listen to this kick drum it's distorting so here's the thing it's distorting not necessarily because of the processing it's going through on the multi-track stage or the bus stage but it's at the mastering stage and it's because we no longer have control over the dynamic range right we're turning it up and for it's the kick drum to cut through now we need it louder in the mix and so it's hitting our mastering chain harder and so what we end up getting is a clipped kick drum Right? That does not sound pleasant. So now when we have this going through the whole mastering chain, we're hitting everything way too hard, okay? And it's causing the distortion. And the 
answer to solving the problem is actually to go back and fix your gain staging. So it can be very confusing when you're mixing into a limiter or a compressor, when you don't have adequate control over the dynamic range like I have in this session. So in conclusion, mixing into a limiter or compressor or even a mastering chain can be really beneficial because then you're hearing a more final product as you're mixing and you don't have any surprises as you get to the mastering stage because you're already kind of doing that at the same time. It can save you a ton of time, but for this approach to work consistently, you have to follow good gain staging practices and also make sure that you're actively managing the transients in your dynamic range of your tracks at many different levels. So starting from the individual files and the multi-tracks all the way up to the group buses and then finally at the mastering stage. So if you can manage both the gain staging and the dynamic range of your songs, then mastering into a limiter or compressor is going to work really, really well for you every single time, regardless of the style or the type of song. So I'm curious to know, do you mix into a mastering chain or a limiter or a limiter and a compressor or saturation or something? Let me know in the comments below. As a reminder, if you need some cool tools that are totally free, go and check out the description because I have a free downloadable guide of my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins. I even have some really killer drum samples in there. With that, I want to thank you so much for your time and attention today. My name is Bobby Balo. I'm the Mixing Mastering Engineer at Rayton Productions. I hope to see you in another video.